In this video, I'm gonna give you an update to my Hero Quest board that I 3D printed from Dragon's Rest. I'm also gonna spend some time walking you through the process because there's a number of options that are available on the Dragon's Rest website, and it might be confusing for the beginner. So if you are interested in 3D printing, hopefully this video will be helpful in walking you through what some of your options might be. If you watch my first two videos on Hero Quest, you'll know that I decided to print actually all of the floor tiles originally in one style and one color, this orangish color. And the reason for that was because I wanted to be able to use the 3D board for other games such as Dungeons and Dragons, Alter Quest, and other dungeon crawlers. But with the recent reprint of Hero Quest, I decided to go ahead and upgrade all of the rooms and print out the floor specific tiles that was provided from Dragon's Rest and to color them. So I was able to recreate the board using all of the unique room tiles that Ian provides. And I think the board turned out looking really good. Using Microsoft Builder, I was able to fuse all of these room tiles together so that they're one piece. And that really speeds up the setup process. So whenever I want to set up the HeroQuest board, it goes a lot faster than when I was putting out individual tiles. I did ask Ian to go ahead and put the tiles that I fused together to make it available to all of you so that you don't have to do that yourself. So just take a look at the JPEG file that maps out all of the pieces and you can print these all as one piece. But I'll go ahead and go through all of the different options later and show you how to grab those from the file folder. Since I started my project, Ian has come out with a couple different iterations and upgrades for the HeroQuest board. And so for the large part, the reason why I chose the system that I have here is because that was what was originally available. But even since the different changes have happened, I would still choose to use the files that I have right now and I'll go into that again later. Having these different floor tiles definitely does add a lot of flavor to the game. And I don't think I would have done this if HeroQuest didn't come out with a reprint, but because they did, I went ahead and made them and these rooms look really colorful and I think it looks fantastic. This centerpiece is different than what is on the original board because I fused that together using Forbidden Prints when they were doing the 30 days of free files. And I don't know if that tile is available anymore. But other than that, everything else is fairly close to the original board game. I did fudge a little bit on some of the colors and some of the patterns as well. But I think it's a pretty close approximation. The other thing I did too that you might want to think of is I did spray prime all of the floor tiles with the dark gray. And the reason why I did that is because I think it ties in all of the pieces and unifies the whole set using that dark gray in the cracks. Because I could have taken a tile like this and just spray painted it, primed it with green, and that would have made painting easier. But by doing it dark underneath, one, it makes the lines between the tiles a lot darker. And two, again, it ties in the whole board as one piece, even with the different colors that each one of these rooms has. So what I'm gonna do now is just walk you through the different files that are available through Dragon's Rest how to grab the files, and starting from the cheapest and easiest option to the most expensive and the most complex, and the various reasons why you might choose one over the other. And I do have links in the descriptions below for everything that I'm referencing. Dragon's Rest does have a website where you can purchase files, but most of these are sci-fi. And if you haven't seen my video showcasing the HVAC set that I made for Space Hulk, go ahead and click here. So some people are confused trying to look for the fantasy themed files from Dragon's Rest, but in order to grab those, you need to become a Patreon supporter. Now this is gonna be the best $6 you're ever going to spend to support someone on Patreon because you're getting a ton of files and files. So once you become a supporter, Ian has an updated code at the beginning of each month and copy and follow the link to Dropbox and paste in the code. And that will give you access to this website. As you can see here, you're gonna have access to all of these files and you can go through them and check them out on your own. But for our sake for HeroQuest, the one we're gonna be focusing in on is the dungeon set. But before we go there, I wanna really quickly show you that all of the build guides are here in this folder and the TDRQ book is what's gonna give you all of the directions to create the traditional board. Also, the other folder I wanna show you is the Community Remix. I have a folder in here that has all of the modified files that I've made. 
and I'll be referencing some of these throughout this video. Now, if you're printing these tiles and only going to be using it for HeroQuest exclusively, my suggestion to you is to grab the 101 HQ pre-built set. Ian just came out with these files and what he does is he has already put together the entire board and you're printing them out into sections. So that takes away the complication of trying to figure out how many of each tile that you want to print. Also, this set uses the slim version of the floor tile, so you're saving money and time in printing because the floor tiles aren't as tall. Now these do clip together with the thin clips and I find them to be relatively strong in holding them together. And the board overall is gonna be slightly different than the original one because Ian moved things around a little bit and added some features like these grates and this border edge on the outside. So those are some enhancements which I think aesthetically look really good. So among the pre-built version, you have an additional two options that you can have. What's shown here is a regular version with a tile slot. And all that means is that these walls have these rectangular holes at the bottom of them and they just slot in right here into the pegs that are on the floor. So this is the cheapest option because you're not needing to purchase any magnets. The floors are clipping together with the thin clips. And so the only price that you're paying is for the PLA spools that you're gonna be getting. For my set, I used about eight spools of PLA, which cost me about $180. And for this thin pre-built version set, I think it would take you maybe about five or six spools. So you're saving that money. The second version of this set is actually a magnetized version. Any of the magnetic systems that are with Dragon's Rest, is gonna be using these five millimeter ball magnets. And those are great because you don't have to worry about the polarity and making sure you're getting that correct because the ball spins around to the correct polarity to match with the one that it's adhering to. So Ian created a very ingenious system where underneath the board are these little holes where you can push in these ball magnets and the same goes for the wall. So you wanna make sure that you're printing the correct wall with the correct floor. Aesthetically, it's gonna be exactly the same as the non-magnetized version, but it will be an additional cost where you're gonna to need to buy approximately a thousand ball magnets. And I bought them in sets of 216 ball magnets for about $15, and it's gonna cost you maybe up to $20 for that many. So you're gonna to have to spend another 75 to $100 in just magnets if you wanna magnetize the walls on this set. You're gonna still need to clip together the floors since the thin version, you cannot magnetize. But again, if it's a dedicated board, I think you should probably just glue them together with the clips because there's no real reason for you to be separating them out anyway. The other option that you have from the pre-built set is to go ahead and print out the individual tiles. And you have two options with those as well, the thin floor tiles and then the regular size floor tiles. So why would you wanna print out individual tiles versus using the pre-built? It's if you want to use your set for other games. Since I wanted to use my set for other games like Dungeons and Dragons and Alter Quest, this is the route that I went. If you're printing individual floor tiles, the cheapest again is using the slim floors with the slots for the walls. No magnets will keep the cost down as well as shorter floors saving on PLA and print time. So if you don't really care about magnetizing, I think this is the best way to go. And it's gonna be approximately the same cost as the pre-built five to six rolls of PLA, maybe a little bit more because you're gonna to need to print more of the connectors. But overall, that's gonna be your cheapest option. And then the next cheapest option is to still stick with the slim floors, but to use the magnetized system to connect the walls onto the floor. You're still clipping the floors together with clips, but the walls are gonna be magnetized. So the next step up in terms of complexity and money is going to be using the regular height floors. The only reason you would choose the regular height floors versus the slim ones is if you want to magnetize so that the floors stick to one another. That's the option I went with because I did want everything to be magnetized, but really there isn't any other reason why you would choose to use the higher height floors because you're adding the amount of time it takes to print in PLA, and you're adding in terms of cost regarding more magnets. If you choose to go this route, as you can see here, you also need to print out the clips that hold the magnets. 
once you print out both your floors as well as the clips, then you slip this ball magnet into the clip and you press it in here and it will clip right into place. You can still use the same walls with the holes underneath where you push the magnet through, but overall you are doubling the number of magnets that you're gonna need, more than doubling. I think I purchased about 3,000 ball magnets for my set. Now, I did make more than is needed for HeroQuest, but that's an additional cost that you need to take into consideration. Also, I would discourage you from printing every tile individually because that is a ton of magnets. Each single square then is going to require four magnets around the perimeter and then two more if it's a wall piece. So what I did, just like I did for the HeroQuest room tiles, is I glued pieces together, and you can go into the Community Remix folder under Gaming Geek, and you can find, at least for tile type A, all of the ones that I already fused together. And there's some two by twos, there are some four by fours, other various rooms, and even the edge pieces, especially the ones that I used for this outside perimeter, those also are glued together there as well. So you can go into there and grab those as you need them. If you wanna customize and create your own pieces, check out my video on how I use MS 3D Builder in order to fuse these pieces together. Ian did provide a floor tool that allows you to combine a number of these tiles all into one piece. And that makes setup time a lot quicker and easier as well as saving on the number of magnets that you need. One of the things also to note with the magnetized piece is that you're unable to lift them up like this, the clipped pieces. Once you try to lift up the magnetized pieces, it tends to fall apart because you don't have the rigidity in order to pick up the pieces. But one of the options, if you are pre-building rooms and you wanna slot them in while your adventures are moving along, is place pre-built rooms onto a board and then slot them into place as players are uncovering various parts of the dungeon. But this is a set that provides me with the most amount of versatility because I'm able to reconfigure all of this set in order to accommodate it for other gaming systems. So for example, if you saw my video about using Smackwell Games Dungeon Crawl as a replacement rule set for HeroQuest, one of the things that you notice from that system is all of the hallways are actually two squares wide. And in the HeroQuest board, most of the hallways are actually only one square wide, so there can be a lot of bottlenecking that would be difficult to translate into Dungeon Crawl's rule set. So what you can do once it's magnetized like this is that you can push this out. All you have to do is add another row of hallway, and what you've done is recreated a lot of the dungeon tiles that's found in Dungeon Crawl. And obviously you can move things around and exactly replicate the floor tiles from Dungeon Crawl and other game systems. Check out how easy it is for me to replicate this scenario from Dungeon Crawl. And the pre-built rooms actually fit exactly to the dimensions of the map. And you can always fudge a little bit, it doesn't have to be exact, but you can see how easy it is to create these other dungeons. And then here's a random dungeon that I created for a dungeon crawler for D&D. Once again, I use these edge pieces to fill in the wall side where there isn't the floor tiles with the wall connectors. And again, you can find that in the community remix folder. And that's what I found to be the most helpful with this tile set is because I can recreate almost any board that I was struggling to do with my other dungeon sets. If you haven't seen that video comparing the different 3D dungeon sets, go ahead and click here. And you might be asking, what do you do if you have caverns on the map? And at this point, Dragon's Rest does not have a caverns version. But what I've done is just place these walls that printable scenery sells, and instantly you have a pretty convincing cavern. So that's an option. Again, links in the descriptions below if, if you want to go that route. I did enlarge these pieces a little bit so that it does fit in the one and a half inch squares that Dragon's Rust has. I apologize that I didn't show how to paint each one of these individual rooms. That would have been long and tedious. But if you want to see an overview of how I did paint, go ahead and make sure you check out my first video in this series. 
I hope this video is helpful for you if you have pre-ordered the reprint of Hero Quest, and you have a whole year to wait before they deliver. This might be a project that you would consider making. Honestly, rather than paying for a print service to make this for you, it would actually be cheaper for you just to buy your own 3D printer and print this set out. And might as well during this time of COVID-19, when you're isolated just to work on hobbying and preparing so that once you're back together with your friends, you can have this awesome set. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Go ahead and check out my Patreon page to see what the GGGG is for this month. For October 2020, the GGGG is the Few and Cursed board game, as well as three printed copies of Dungeon Crawl. If you want in on some of that action, go ahead and go over to my Patreon page. Otherwise, happy gaming, happy hobbying, and we'll see you next time.